Yams. Yams? Are yams really the answer to helping families in developing countries? That's what I want to talk about today here on Market Power. My name is Craig and we are talking about what's going on in developing countries, trying to understand relationships between family, trying to understand how people live with poverty and what we might be able to do to help them get out of it. In a previous video, I talked about how we have this strange relationship between resources allocated to farms that men cultivate and farms that women cultivate. And I'm trying to continue that theme here with understanding more about family and about relationships between husbands and wives and children. I've got more videos coming on that as well, but on this one I want to talk about does it matter who earns the income in a family? In developing countries. Now, you might say, well, isn't that a question that we're interested in in a developed country as well? Yeah, sure. But the evidence I'm citing today is going to come from developing countries, though I guess, you know, actually, so one of them is going to be South Africa, which South Africa in the 90s, not quite a developing country, but it's going to be like a developing country context. And then we're also going to talk about the Ivory Coast or Cote d'Ivoire. And both of these contexts are going to help us understand how families in developing countries use their income and why it matters who makes that income. So first, let's go to South Africa and do this really quick introduction to this paper by Esther Duflo. Now, Esther Duflo just won the Nobel Prize. I keep bringing her up. That's because she has so much work, so much, so many things that are important for us to understand. And this is one of her first pieces of work. She wanted to look at this question of, does it matter whether we give income to a man versus a woman? And this is an important question, especially in developing countries, where a lot of times we start talking about, you know, let's empower women, let's give income to the woman, let's give her some economic opportunity, economic power. Her question was, does that even matter? And there are lots of pieces of evidence that say, yeah, it matters if you give it to women. But the problem with the evidence that existed before her study was that most studies looked at whether a woman had income and they found that when a woman has income, there were different outcomes for children, different outcomes for the family. And the question that Duflo brings up is, why is it that some women have income and others don't. That's gonna be an important determinant of what's going on in these families. This isn't some random thing. If a woman is working and earning income, that's a different family than a, a family where a woman is not working. So she wanted to know, what if we just drop money into a family, but we have to designate who gets it? Doesn't matter who we designate. And that's where we get to South Africa because she's looking in a context post-apartheid where all of a sudden they're in changing the pension system. Blacks were getting, I mean, I'm sure it was basically no pensions, but if they were getting any pensions, it was significantly less than what whites were getting. Post-apartheid reform comes in, suddenly blacks are able to get much larger pensions. She looks at what happens when these pensions come in and what she wants to look at, let's grab this whiteboard again, this thing, I love this thing, even though uh, it tends to catch my light up here, so um, sometimes it gets funky. Let's see if it adjusts anything right now. I'm trying to not let it change too much about what's going on here. What we wanna know is here is, uh, you know, can grandma have curly hair like that, I guess? I don't know, I'm just imagining. And here's grandpa, he's he's bald, okay? Does that make sense right there, grandma, grandpa? We're gonna give the pension to one of them, and we wanna know what happens to a grandchild living with them, but not just any grandchild. We wanna know what happens if we put in these nice stick figures that sometimes are wearing dresses or skirts, okay. I mean, this is just high quality graphic design on this channel now. What happens when we just magically drop some money on one of these two? That's the nice thing about this pension reform is that suddenly grandma and grandpa are getting a lot of money. And what is it? I think 30% of children in South Africa, at least black children in South Africa, under the age of five live with a grandparent. This is a great opportunity to see what happens when we give money to a member of the family. What does it do? Well, what Esther finds out, Esther Duflo, I mean, let's be, let's be proper here. When grandpa gets money, 
nothing really happens with the grandchildren, boy or girl, nothing really happens. But when grandma gets the money, the weight of the girl goes up, weight of the boy doesn't really change, okay? Why do we care about weight? Well, weight is gonna be a measure of your access to food, especially in a developing country. We call this anthropometrics. The idea is your body weight and your height are going to indicate something about your standard of living growing up. This is fantastic for us to understand when we don't have really good measures. Like ideally we wanna see how much food is this girl eating? How much food is this boy eating? That's ideally what we wanna see, but it's gonna be hard for us to get that data. So instead, what we do is we just look at their weight because weight is a function of food. Of course, that's not a one-to-one -one relationship. Obviously, there are lots of things that come in, but food is a major factor in your weight. And what this indicates is that when grandmas get money and the weight of their granddaughters goes up, that means their granddaughters are getting more food, more access to resources, or at least a better standard of living. And so this was, you know, some of the first like really powerful evidence that it mattered who got the money. Now this is kind of a weird context, context grandma versus grandpa, but it gave us an important lesson. And she actually works with Chris Udry, who did that paper on the farms and the, the production possibilities frontier. They teamed up to look more at this question. And that's where yams come in. So let me explain to you what the Ivory Coast looks like. The Ivory Coast, significant fraction of the population works in agriculture. And we can classify the types of things that they do into three groups, okay? We're gonna have cash crops for men, cash crops for women, and we can do yams. And it's also men who farm those, okay? So we have cash crop for men, cash crop for women, yams, also farmed by men. Strong cultural bias, cultural tradition, that men are farming yams. Men also have a few crops that they do for cash crops. Women also have a few cash crops. The idea is these families, the man has a few plots of land, the woman has a few plots of land, and there is a designation on which types of crops they're supposed to be farming. Now, the nice thing about this is that culturally, at least what is believed, is that the yams that men produce are supposed to be for the family. This is supposed to be, the, the revenue from yams is supposed to go to everyone. Now the cash crops that men are far farming, by the way, I'll put, this is what men usually do for cash crops in Ivory Coast. This is what women usually do for cash crops in Ivory Coast. Sorry, I don't have those off the top of my head. But yams belong to the whole family. And so what they want to do is look at the change in revenues that come. They, Agriculture varies from year to year. Sometimes you have good rain that helps your crops out. Sometimes you have a little bit of drought, your crops don't do that well. And so they want to look at these three areas and say, what happens when this changes? And what they find is indeed that when income for yams goes up, there's more income spent on food for the entire family. And when income for the, you know, cash for men and cash for women goes up, that's when you start seeing them spend a little bit more money on uh, alcohol or tobacco. Um, for women, you also see more on food when this goes up. Um, for the cash crops on men, not as much for food. But the idea is, you know, this is pretty consistent with what we find in South Africa. Cash for women goes up, expenditures on food for the family goes up. Cash for men goes up, we see more on alcohol and tobacco. But this is the cool part. It's not just food, it's also education. It's a man's crop. And yet the income with that crop is tied to what the family gets for food, what the family gets for education. And why I say this is the solution for families in developing countries is that, okay, so there are a lot of people who see these kind of results and they say, oh, that means we need to give money to the women because women will spend it in a way better than men spend it. What this study tells me, what yams tell me, is that men will spend the money on the right thing as long as there's kind of this culture or this belief, whatever it is, this understood obligation that the money they're earning through that path goes to the whole family. I think that's really encouraging. I think that's something that we should 
explore more. Like how do we create these cultural obligations behind men providing for their families in developing countries? And not to say that women aren't allowed to provide for their families, but if we believe that in these developing countries, men controlling income is a problem towards families progressing and getting access to the resources they need, this story tells us there is a way around that. And it might be culture, which is weird for an economist to say. Usually we like to look at prices, but there might be some cultural thing that we need to change to get it so men spend that income on their families. So that's why yams could be the solution to understanding what's going on in, with families in developing countries. They teach us that we might just need to help people understand their familial obligations. Now I'm doing a couple of videos on developing countries. I'm doing uh, family and gender in developing countries. So go ahead and check out those videos up there. And also please subscribe so that way you can be involved in this community of people interested in and excited about economics. We'll see you in the next Market Power.